Many scientists around the globe agree about the chief causes of climate change. However, how to deal with climate change, reduce or stop it, is contentious. An environmental hot potato, so to speak, or a warming potato. Professor Mike Hume has served on many intergovernmental panels on climate change. He has led teams conducting research for the UK government and the EU commissions. He's taught about it and written about it. He is in Vancouver to discuss it. It is my pleasure to welcome Professor Mike Hume from East Anglia, England to Studio 4 to tell us more. Good morning. Hi. Climate change. Uh, when did you uh, start studying that? When did the term come up? Uh, I started studying it back in the late 70s as a geography student, uh, mm. my university days, and I took a, a course in geography, uh, and one of the majors was in climate. And so climate change was talked about in the late 70s. Although well, I can remember my professor, he actually thought that the thing that we had to watch out for was the next ice age. Mm. He didn't think that it was global warming that we had to be concerned about. So that was my introduction to it 30-odd 30, 30 years ago. And since then, my career has yeah, locked me into studying mm -hmm. it. I was looking at your bio. You are a professor of environmental sciences, but you're also a professor of climate change. Mm. Uh, do you think in your lifetime there will be a final agreement on what to do about it, how to fix it? Will, will there still be contrarians saying, not happening, man isn't doing anything wrong? Not in my lifetime. I, I don't think that any human agreement, however tight or universal it is, actually has the ability to control climate. Climates change. That's what climates do. Mm -hmm. They change on geological timescales. They change on the timescales of centuries. Uh, they change on the timescales of your and my lives. That's what climates do. They change. So trying to th control climate to sort of say that we can stabilize it is illusory. What we have to be concerned about is what effects are human beings having on the climate system uh, that are additional to these natural mm -hmm. changes. And are these human things that we're doing to it, are they things that actually we can reduce? But I don't think that an agreement that tries to get universal assent to say that we're going to limit Mm -hmm. Cl climate change to two degrees is credible. Right, and there'll be a lot of fragmentation, I'm sure, on policy and other things. So why we disagree about climate change in all these different countries is because... Because we want different things for our people. You know, stopping climate change, although some of the campaigners and the advocates say that we must stop climate change before all else, mm -hmm. you know, it's more important than reducing poverty, it's more important than protecting ecosystems, it's more important than improving public health and developing... Actually stopping climate change is not really what people want to happen. What people want is improving public health or protecting ecosystems uh, or improving the, the air quality in cities. So uh, that means that there are multiple objectives. There's not one universal objective and there are multiple objectives and so recognizing that gives us more scope for finding policy solutions mm -hmm. because we don't have to get everybody to agree. But it does cost countries and governments money mm -hmm. to implement policy, uh, to join a Kyoto or another accord. Well, but, but Kyoto is a, is a good example of a universal framework which actually has gone nowhere. We've had the Kyoto Protocol now for nearly 15 years. And actually mm -hmm. back in the 1990s when I was studying this and thinking about it, I actually thought that this was a good strategy to get the major emitting countries to agree to setting targets to reduce their emissions by a certain date and to introduce carbon trading to do it. Fifteen years on, if I look at what, what Kyoto has achieved, it's achieved virtually nothing at all. And so my view is that that is not the right way to tackle this. We actually have to find a much wider diversity of strategies, partnerships, um, with different sectors of industry, uh, bilateral agreements between northern and southern nations. Uh, we have to find uh, ways of uh, innovating our energy uh, technology, and that requires, in, in my view, and a number of analysts' view, very significant amounts of public uh, investment. Mm. So these are multiple solutions for a problem that is multi-headed and, and fragmentary. 
and the and way complex. it's complex and people will disagree about it and this is what my book is actually focusing on the reasons why we disagree we disagree about climate change because we have got different objectives and goals mm. in many areas in trade and all of that uh, uh, China emerging nation we're not emerging nation <laughs> she's emerged yes <laughs> the, the giants no longer asleep yeah. so you have all, all, all the people in China wanting one thing uh, more refrigerators uh, come take me into that century yeah. and they, uh, and those of us over here driving more cars yeah, so what wanting not to pay for what's going on what in China, China what China wants what India wants I mean India is another mm. great example actually that that is uh, an, an emerging economy with one point just over a billion people now um, but but take one element of, of India's uh, society where something around one and a half million people die prematurely because of indoor smoke pollution. Mm. This is because of people cooking on open cookers mm -hmm. in, in their houses. And, and, and that is terrible for your lungs. So w what is important to India? To stop climate change at two degrees or to uh, electrify domestic cookers so that one and a half million people mm -hmm. don't die of bronchial illness? It makes sense. Uh, kerosene stoves. Uh, there's a, a solar stove now that they're mm -hmm. selling in India, and it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, in the way, by the way, if you little if, things, if, if India achieves that in the process, they will have also reduced their CO2 emissions somewhat, mm -hmm. and that will do something for climate change a little bit. But the major win is an improvement in public health. Um, so the point is that a lot of these things that different countries want to do will differ from other countries and yet by pursuing them at different speeds, with different strategies, with different types of policy measures, we will actually gradually, incrementally, bit by bit, reduce the human influence on the climate system. Mm. And there's no question in your mind that climate change is, is mother nature made but it's also man made. There is, there is definitely a human component to it. We don't know it. what the relative proportions are. Mm -hmm. It might be an awful lot. It might be a rather modest amount. Um, but that actually isn't really the important thing. People get hooked up on the, the arguments about, you know, is it 82% caused by humans? Is it 43% mm -hmm. caused by humans? You know, that's an irrelevant discussion. The point is that humans are having an influence and we should find ways of reducing that influence. At the same time, as achieving our other welfare goals. Mm -hmm. But as you know so well, until humans actually are affected by it in a major way, for instance, the, the salmon stop running, or the, the plankton's gone, mm -hmm. <laughs> the ocean warms, uh, your house falls into the sea, and I know that sounds dramatic, the, the ice is melting, the polar bears are gone. Mm. Until that happens, sometimes mm. we don't pay attention. Yeah. Well, Deforestation. Houses, houses falling into the sea, I, I come from East Anglia in England on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and our land is sinking into the North Sea. Uh, the ocean is rising a, a little bit as well, but there are houses that are literally uh, falling into the ocean. And the interesting thing about the owners of those houses is that they're not arguing for some grand global agreement to try to uh, rein in carbon emissions mm -hmm. because it'll take 50 or 100 years for that to have any benefit for them. What they're arguing about is, well, what am I going to do with my house that's slipping into the sea? Uh, I want some compensation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I want some uh, protection that the state will uh, offer to protect the cliff line mm -hmm. where my house is situated. So local people actually want attention to local scale issues they're not actually uh, concerned about these uh, rather, rather distant global scale mm. uh, political mm -hmm. agreements. Even though we love our grandchildren, love our children, and want to leave them a planet that is fairly <laughs> intact, it, 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 on a daily basis people forget about that. Uh, but to invest in low carbon technology just makes sense, does it not? Uh, it does in the longer term. Okay. Uh, and these are long term changes. To change our, our energy economy, from one that has become so dependent upon fossil carbon to one that is less dependent is, is not a five-year or a ten-year project. It's a 50 to 100-year project. Mm -hmm. uh, and to think that actually one can achieve this in relatively short time scales, again, I would argue is illusory. Britain has set itself a target of reducing its emissions by 80% in the next 40 years. Uh, I don't believe 
that that is going to be achievable within a mm -hmm. single nation in a 40-year time period. The scale of the, the transformation of energy systems is such that I just don't think that can be achieved. Setting a target is honorable, as you know, and a good first step, but not meeting the target isn't so good. So if you don't meet the target, what should happen to you or what should happen to a country or well, a the, world? It, well, in the UK, I, I mean, there is provision for um, mm -hmm. uh, Parliament to be, held, to be held to account. But of course, by the time 2050 is reached, the world will be a very different place. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, that penalty, if, if you like, that sanction against the Parliament in 40 years' time is, is rather abstract and hypothetical. I, I, targets are, are, have their place, but I don't think we should get obsessed by targets. What actually matters very much more, and certainly around this low-carbon energy revolution that we need, is actually setting our, 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 our course on a particular pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the problem at the moment is that we're too obsessed about the long-term target and not, a, not obsessed enough about right. the short-term pathway, the, the, the immediate trajectory that we're on. And not only uh, would people like to help, they are helping or they think they're helping, but we need the truth, right? <laughs> like, to, we're not scientists, so we need to understand what causes it a little bit, but then we either reduce, reuse, recycle, rethink, uh, drive less, uh, drive an electric car, we're not quite sure what to do individually. Well, I think that's we not... We sort of know. But that's not really because these arguments about science, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. It's not because you have critics on the one hand saying all the science is dodgy, uh, and on the other hand, you've got climate scientists saying that we're, you know, purer than snow, whiter than white. That sort of argument plays well on certain sort of media debates. Um, and it causes a friction of excitement. But actually, that isn't really why people act or don't act okay. on their own mm -hmm. lifestyle choices. People act or don't act on their lifestyle choices because of the belief systems and the value systems that they themselves mm -hmm. have. Arguments about science are actually, in my view, a, a, a distraction to the important mm -hmm. questions that climate change raises. Um, and, that, and that, again, is the thrust of my, of my book. It's not a book about science. It's a book about, if you like, it's about human behavior. How do we make the decisions that we make? What are the influences? Right. The psychological aspect, the exactly. sociological aspect, the cultural aspect. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Uh, Professor Mike Hume, our guest, uh, he'll be uh, speaking this evening, Why We Disagree About Climate Change at the Fletcher Challenge Theater. It starts at 5 o'clock. We'll come back. <laughs>